So you've seen all those Sparkly LinkedIn listings, all those job listings on Seek for a cloud position. And you're thinking, hmm, you know, that sounds pretty good. The compensation's good. The perks and benefits seem to be pretty nice. And plus, I'd be able to brag to the very small niche of people that is my friends that understand engineering. But, you know, you're a little bit lost as to where to actually go about learning or starting to get into a career like that. There seems to be quite a few uh, job listings with like tons of languages and technologies and it can seem pretty daunting to try and get into that space. Particularly moving into an engineering or architecture role, you might think, hmm, what would be the best language for me to maximize the ROI on the time that I put into actually learning these skills? Today, I'm here to answer that for you. And the answer is ChatGPT. <laughs> if you can learn how to prompt ChatGPT, you'll be set. You just need to learn how to, one, ask the right questions, and two, hide the fact that you're using a uh, language learning model to you know, completely automate your entire job. Simple, 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 simple. But seriously, when you're trying to learn or get into the cloud, uh, I guess there's a couple of tips that I would like to give as far as it goes for picking a language and being able to determine what would be the best uh, course for you to get into the cloud vendor or company that works within the cloud space of your dreams. So let's get into it. When it comes to picking a language to get into the cloud and get your feet wet in these sort of frameworks that are used within a cloud space, the first step is deciding what sort of vendor or cloud space you want to work in. So for instance, you have the major vendors like AWS, Azure, uh, Google Cloud Platform. All of these different cloud companies have their own sort of stack, uh, which they utilize different languages in order to extract the most value or the most performance out of them. For instance, if you were going to try and make AWS your uh, path of entry into the cloud space, then you might look at using something like Java, Ruby, uh, Python, a lot of general purpose languages that are very uh, well supported within AWS, as well as quite a few like Microsoft stacks like .NET and C Sharp, which are also supported. But then if you're focusing more on moving into Azure and that Microsoft stack, you would obviously look very heavily at that .NET stack. And if you're looking at, say, moving into Google, you might focus more on languages more like Go or Python. Uh, these are languages that are used pretty heavily within the Google code base and deploy a lot of the machine learning and data science applications that run on the Google Cloud platform. They're going to give you the basics required to actually get your feet wet in the actual technology stack or the actual cloud platform itself. So the best way to learn these languages and learn how the, pl the cloud platforms operate and what their benefits are in comparison to each other is to actually play around in the, in the cloud console itself or deploy your applications and actually you know, write some physical tangible codes and projects in the stack of your choice. And here's the thing, right? When you're learning to move into the cloud or perhaps even just any sort of realm of software engineering, uh, you don't have to be proficient in every single language that a company or a certain stack utilizes. But instead, especially at the very start, you want to focus on one and make you want to make that language your thing, all right? You want to spend all your time building up the proficiency within that one language rather than context switching, trying to teach yourself Go, Python, Ruby, Java, all at the same time. You're not going to get the, the uh, return on investment that you would get by focusing on a single language and learning all of the programming paradigms that apply generally across all of the programming languages and stacks uh, that you would get if you'd focus entirely on a specific language itself. So now that we've had a look at cloud vendors that you'd be interested in and programming languages that those cloud vendors utilize to best get the return on investment on the time you spend studying for this role, I guess another thing it would be good to consider is thinking about what the demand is for that particular language or stack that you are moving towards. So for instance, if you uh, were looking to move into more data science roles, you would have a look at like uh, what amount or percentage of data scientists are currently using that language and what the forward outlook is for the growth in user base for that language. Uh, realistically, for your first language, I would recommend just picking one that's easy to pick up and a lot of people use it because there'll be a lot of informational and educational content on the internet that you can utilize to uh, 
quickly uptake that information that you need to get it get running uh, with your programming language. And if you can get some solid projects underneath your belt that not only technically work and you have you'd have quite a bit of content to talk to with recruiters about, but something that you'd be very uh, comfortable sort of showcasing to the recruiters in the interviews. More often than not, if you have a project and it's listed on your resume and you're in a, a, a technical interview, they're going to ask you to explain what it was that you did and what the learning outcomes that you had from actually undertaking that particular project. And I think um, picking something that's at the right level of content, that's it's technically complex, but it's simple enough that you can give like a, a brief introduction on uh, what it is, what it does, how you achieved it, and what was learned throughout it. Uh, these are very key takeaways that you can give a recruiter to make yourself more hireable from, uh, especially from an early career and getting into tech space uh, perspective. And I guess the final tip for when you're trying to pick a language or stack to specialize in, uh, this is probably the most important part is pick something that you're confident in uh, or somewhat interested in already. There's nothing worse than trying to teach yourself something that you have absolutely no passion for or interest in because trust me, yeah, it'll be a grind. And more often than not, people just drop it and become uh, lose interest in the pursuit itself because they couldn't get over the hump that was uh, you know, actually getting into a coding language or a programming stack. So pick something that you think is uh, pretty interesting in both the way that it's, it works and the way that it's implemented so that when you go and implement your projects, you have that natural passion for the thing that you're trying to deliver or build. Uh, that really is the number one tip that I can give you. Um, it can be very easy to like hear people talk about, oh, you know, here's this really complex language or here's everything that this is capable of and thinking, oh, this must be the best thing for me moving into the tech space. What works best is the thing that you're gonna to stick to and commit to on a long-term basis. Because that's where you're going to get a lot of the fundamental knowledge that's required to operate in, the, in, in these technical spaces. Leave it to later to become an expert in 10 languages. You don't need to do that at the very start. Um, and it can kind of seem like you just need to be doing multiple things at the same time because you need to get yourself job ready as quickly as possible. When in reality, just focusing in on that narrow set of skills that's going to get you in the door is the main thing that you want to be doing. So yeah, pick your, pick your primary language and then practice the shit out of it. You want to get that thing down to, you need to understand all the basics and fundamentals of that language, the intricacies such that if, a, if, if someone's asking you about it in either a technical or an interview space, you can give that answer off the, off the bat because you've got that experience now and you've gone level 200, level 300 on it. So to summarize, if you're trying to get into the cloud space and thinking about like what language or stack you want to work with, the couple key takeaways are try and pick a vendor to specialize in, find out what their primary languages are, and then pick one or two that you really want to become proficient in and you have somewhat of a passion or interest to pursue those and actually build out projects inside of them such that when it comes up to that time for applying for jobs and trying to get into these roles, you've got that, that level two, three hundred experience. When they ask you the questions, you can give the answers. And when you get into the role, you know, maybe your imposter syndrome will just be a smidge less. It's definitely still gonna be there, but it might be a little bit less. And if you're feeling particularly nihilistic and like you want to embrace our robot overlords quicker, perhaps you could just focus on prompting ChatGPT into thinking that you're a friend of robot kind and that it should really, you know, just skip you over in the human extermination that's going to come in the next couple of years. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I may or may not read them. And on that note, see you in the next video.